we're going to start today's lesson with a graph. For those of you that don't like maths, I'm sorry, there's been quite a lot of graphs recently, but it is really important as a sociologist to be able to analyse data and figure out what it is telling us about society. So if we look at the graph there, what we've got is along the Y axis, um, that is the vertical one, we've got the average number of live born children going from zero at the bottom to three. And along the X axis, the horizontal one, we've got some years. So the year of birth of the woman. So from 1920 up there to 1985. And you've got four questions there that I'd like you to try and answer. So press pause and give that a go. OK, so question number one. On average, how many children did a woman born in 1934 have before the age of 30? So you'll see there's two different coloured blue lines there. And the darker blue one is the children before the age of 30. The light blue one is at the end of all of their having all of their children. So if we look at 1934, we've got 1935 there on our graph. So we'll go just slightly before that. And we can see we're looking at a figure of about 1.8 ish to be how many children were born before the age of 30. Number two, on average, how many children were born in a completed family for a woman born in 1934? So we're going up to the light blue line and we're just nearly at 2.5, so around about 2.4. Then we're going across now to those women born in 1964. And how many children did they have before the age of 30? Much lower, more like 1.2 ish. And then on average, how many were in a completed family for the same woman? And we're looking just under the two line at about 1.9. So they were those figures there. And the other little bits of information, what it's telling you is that the women who were born in 1969 that were having their children, they their mothers were the 1942 women. OK, just to give you a little bit of information of how everybody was related to each other. So why do you think families have got smaller? Clearly, families have got smaller over the years. You can see a really clear down arrow there, down uh, trajectory there. So why do you think that is the case? So the title for today's lesson is, in fact, why are families getting smaller? So put that down, please, along with today's date. And there's the graph again. We've looked at some information here. So we know we talked about it just now that women born in 1964 have average completed families of 1.9 children. And women that were born 30 years before that had completed families of around about 2.4 children. So we can see that the number of children people are having is going down by about half a child. Obviously, people don't have half children, but that is what the statistics will tell you is the difference. Also, it's interesting to note that 20 percent of women born in 1964. So that is women who are about 10 years or so older than me. So late 50s now have had no children at all. And obviously it's too late for them to now have children. So 20 percent, one in five women are now choosing to not have children or maybe not choosing, but are not having children. And that compares to only 12 percent of women born 30 years earlier. So there's also almost double the number of women not having children at all now than there was 30 years ago. Jot those things down into your books just so that you've got a feel of the patterns, please. So what I need you to do on the next slide, there is some information about why those things are happening. And there's four headings really for that information. The changing position of women, the decline in religion, finances and mobility. What I would like you to do is use that information to just note take into those four different categories. And then we'll have a look at the step up question in a moment. So let's just have a look at the information on the next slide. I won't read all of this out for you, but you can see this corresponds to the sections on your grid that you're going to write some notes into. But I will just go through the first one so that you get an idea of what you need to be jotting down. So it says there, change in position of women. One reason why families are smaller is because of changes in the lives of women. Due to changes in job opportunities, many women are choosing to have long careers and therefore put off having children at a younger age. In addition to this, there are changes in contraception starting in the 1960s. So we've got the contraceptive pill, meaning women can choose when to try for children and they can enjoy sexual intercourse without the worry of pregnancy. So all you need to put in your notes there is that it's about job opportunities, women choosing careers and the contraception 
allows for women to not have to worry about pregnancy. They are the key things that you need to be jotting down. And of course, if women are having children in later life, they've got less years in which they can actually have children, which would also mean even those women that are having some children are having less children. So do the other three sections as well as the changing position of women one. And then I'd like you to consider that question again, that final question. Lower income families are likely to have more children than higher income families. Why do you think that might be? So I'd like you to jot down reasons why you think it is that lower income families might have more children than higher income families. Think about job choices. Think about the role of women. Think about the financial implications. OK, thank you for listening today.